Hi, I am Margarita. I'm a designer at iconsite.com. Winter is coming and Christmas is so soon. If you want to make a cool gift to your friend or maybe yourself, I will show you an easy way to make a Christmas t-shirt pattern in just a few minutes. In my work, when I'm making something new, I start from gathering inspiration. You can find a lot of good examples of Christmas patterns on Dribbble or Pinterest. The next thing to decide for your t-shirt pattern is color. You can also search for some good palettes and I prefer to use red, white and green because I feel that it gives the most festive mood to Christmas images. When you are making your pattern, try not to make it over complicated, without too small details, otherwise it will be noisy, so keep it clear and neat. Try to use as little color as possible. It's also good to use the color of t-shirt itself. When you decide the composition, think of the images that associate with Christmas for you. It's not necessarily the classic pattern. It can be made even of Star Wars images, so it's up to you and your fantasy. And make some sketches. When you go to Illustrator, click on New File and set the size. I will set a thousand pixels and thousand and five hundred, so the resolution will be high enough for printing. First of all, I create a rectangle, the same size as the artboard, and color it in red, because I want to print a white pattern on a red t-shirt. Now I'm creating a horizontal line holding shift, and I want it to consist of little squares, so I create a small square. And just for a moment I color it in green. Now open brushes panel and drag and drop the little square to it and then choose pattern brush option and click OK. You can see a window where you can set the preferences for the newly made brush. I'm going to set spacing 100% so that the space between squares will be the same as the squares themselves. Now I'm going to check each tile and I want to choose for corner tiles auto overlap option. In section fit I choose add space to fit so that the squares won't be stretched. In the colorization section I click on eyedropper and choose the white color somewhere in the window and then go to method and choose hue shift so that the little squares in this brush will be of white color. Click OK. And now I select the straight line and choose the newly made brush. Voila! I want this line to be in a form of zigzag, so I go to Effect, Distort and Transform and choose Zigzag. You can play around with the preferences. I found the best ones for this line. And click OK. If you want to have little squares as separate objects, you can go to Object and expand appearance. I'm going to leave this line for now. I select the little square I made before and holding shift I turn it for 45 degrees, then recolor to white and holding alt and shift I make a copy of this square on the other side of the artwork. Now I select both of them and with blend tool I click on one of them and then the other. As a result, several squares will appear between them. Double click on the Blend tool to open Preferences window. Click on Preview and here you can adjust steps. This means you can select how many squares will appear between the initial ones. Let's say 15. Now I'm going to adjust a little bit the zigzag line and delete the little squares that I don't need here. Holding Alt and Shift, drag it downwards and then holding Shift, turn it around. In order to add some more complicated images, I'm going to use Icon Say Desktop App. It allows me to drag and drop ready made icons right into Illustrator. I choose the white color on the upper panel. To see some Christmas icons, go to Holidays category. I do already know that I want icons to be in material style, so I click on it. 
Here you can choose the format and size of the icon and then you can drag and drop it to the Illustrator window. Now just copy paste the icons to the main file and now just make a pattern out of them. You can adjust their size, you can reflect them. I also adjust spacing between the icons. Then holding Alt and Shift, copy the elements and find a good place for them. There should be repeating elements in the pattern. Seems like this pattern needs some more images. I feel like adding some snowflakes. I'm going to search for a snowflake icon of a different style. And then I drag and drop the snowflake to Illustrator and copy paste it to the main file. I see that it is made of lines with a certain stroke, but for better scaling I go to Object, Expand. This snowflake is going to be a little smaller, it will be 72 pixels. I am going to align it right to the center of the little diamond above it. And using Blend tool I am going to again create a line of snowflakes. If you want separated snowflakes, you can go to Object Expand. There will be another line of snowflakes in this pattern. So I'm taking the same snowflake and making it two times smaller and place under the bottom zigzag. I'm adjusting the position of the two snowflakes on the edges and again select them both and using Blend tool I create the line of the same snowflakes. Adjust the position of the big parts of the pattern as it grows, so it doesn't look like it sticks to the edges. Now I want to create an area filled with tiny diamonds, even smaller than in line and zigzag. For this I create a really small white square and holding shift rotate it for 45 degrees, a little, really small one. Now make another square, let's say with side of 100 pixels and make it have only a stroke, not a fill. Now place a little diamond in each corner of the big square and one more in the center of it. Now make the stroke of the big square invisible and open the swatches panel. Select all the little diamonds and the invisible square and drag them to swatches panel. When the window with pattern options is opened, you can set the size of the pattern just the same as the size of the invisible square. It will be 100 pixels each side. Click on the button Done. Delete the initial diamonds and square and create another rectangle and fill it with the newly made pattern in swatches panel and make the stroke of the rectangle invisible. You can also add some text on the t-shirt. It can be simply two words Merry Christmas and I'm going to put it in the middle of the pattern. Maybe just a little smaller. Okay. Now I double click on the rectangle filled with little diamonds and go to Object, Expand. And now I want to delete all the invisible squares. So I select some of them. Then in menu I go to Select, Same Appearance. Every invisible rectangle in this pattern is selected and I delete them all. Now I choose Direct Selection tool and delete all the tiny diamonds that go out of the edges or interfere with the text. When working with the text, sometimes you will need to adjust the spacing between the lines. So the text and little diamonds look well together. Looks like I need to adjust spacing some more and to delete one more diamond. If you want to use a t-shirt color as a background, you will have to delete the background shape in your Illustrator file. For now I am just going to create a new layer at the bottom and place the red rectangle on it and make it invisible. Not all of the print shops have the same software installed so sometimes it's better to save the file in several possible formats. I'm going to save it in Adobe Illustrator, SVG, EPS. I will also export the file to 
PNG format. So I'm going to see how the pattern will work on a t-shirt. Open the mock-up in Photoshop and most of them allow to recolor the t-shirt itself. So what I'm going to do is to color it into the red. Now, like in most of the mock-ups, you have to just double-click on the layer, which is a smart object. It is usually labeled really straightforward, so you won't miss it. And then, in this file, I delete all the previous artwork and simply drag and drop my PNG file and save it. After that, I go to initial file and already see my design applied to a t-shirt. You can also play with different colors of pattern and t-shirts. Hope you enjoyed the video and you'll get a really cool Christmas t-shirt. So good luck to you! Bye!